All right, peace be to you all. So, on if this is Omar Abdulmalik, physician, associate, and health educator. So, I wanted to try something different other than my uh, running vlogs that I just do this um, as I got off from work. Uh, so, I wanted to talk to you guys about just have a brief um, share of my thoughts about um, Governor uh, Cuomo and his, um, you know, he's the New York governor who just resigned under allegations of sexual allegations apparently by um, 11 women if I remember correctly so he gave a concession speech and in the speech he suggested that a lot of his interactions with women um, that were perceived to be sexual harassment were due to his his um, I think his if I remember correctly he said um, generational and cultural misunderstandings. I, th I thought that was interesting. <laughs> um, that was an interesting way to put it. But anyway, he, he's, he's resigned. And I thought about how many other people have had to give the same type of con concession speech, whether it was um, athletes or CEOs or politicians or um, even uh, religious heads, and almost always men, I think in probably 99% of the cases, um, especially since this uh, Me Too movement has started, you know, a few years ago. Um, I, that, to me, uh, segues into caveats that I, I would like to respectfully extend to young men, um, as, as I do my sons, as they, as they transition into young adulthood. And I've told them, uh, my advice to them was, guys, don't do anything that could really be interpreted as sexual harassment. And this often starts in the teenage years. You know, I, you know, just being in high school, you'll see boys, you know, pat a girl on her behind or something, or, or talk about her body, or tease her or something like that. And it's considered in some circles, boys being boys, you know, quote unquote. But it's really bad behavior, and, and quite often it goes unaddressed because of that boys will be boys paradigm. Um, it's become part of, uh, or not become, but it, it, it's part of what unfortunately is considered a cultural norm. Now, I, I'm very much against this, in fact, um, and I'm glad that my, my sons actually listen to me. In fact, my... my um, oldest son, who's now in his early 20s, was working his first job a few years ago, <laughs> and he, he said there's some guy, there's a fairly attractive young lady working at the job, and uh, these guys were whispering behind her, and one of them uh, turned to my son and said, hey, man, you want to tap that junk? <laughs> That's colloquial for, like, would you like to have sex with her or something like that. I said, so, so, it's like, no, you know, leave her alone. He said, we could get fired. Or even arrested, you know, just that, and he decided not to um, to uh, be part of that that group of uh, of young men. So he just stayed. I said, look, just stay away from those guys, guys like that, because you'll get in trouble, you know, because it could become, you know, not that guy sexually harassed me. It's those guys sexually harassed me, and you really got to be careful about this. See, I used to be a professor many years ago in a, in a PA program. And as part of my opening remarks to the incoming class, I would, I would issue that same caveat. So listen, guys, be careful with how you interact, especially you young men. Be respectful. Don't ogle any young women. Don't put your hands on them in a, respect, a disrespectful manner. Or, you know, uh, don't touch them without their permission. And you know, in particular, when you are doing something like PA school or medical school or nursing school, and you get to um, courses like physical diagnosis, where you're touching each other, you're doing, you know, palpations and, and percussions and listening to people with your with your stethoscope, especially around the chest area, <laughs> you can get yourself in a lot of trouble if you don't if you're not careful with where your hands are or you're making comments about the person's body. Or make it feel uncomfortable. And I used to teach this course. I used to teach uh, physical diagnosis. It was a 
physical diagnosis and history taking. So I was always very careful with my young female, with my female students, the young ones in particular, because, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to um, ever do anything or say anything to them, you know, where I could get in trouble. And I, I try to carry myself in a manner that I would want somebody treating my, my daughter, you know, or my wife. You know, I wouldn't want um, them to be uh, pawing all over them and touching stuff and squeezing stuff and, and you know, and it'd say, oh, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know that she would find that offensive or I didn't know I was crossing the line. You got to be careful. Now, I, I don't usually talk about my religion and, um, uh, very openly, but I, I am Muslim in, in our Quran. There's a verse in which um, we believe the Lord tells us um, to, uh, it tells the men to lower their gaze and guard their modesty. So you don't want to be ogling a woman like, wow, look at that. Yo, check her out. <laughs> you know, and then, and then guard your modesty. You don't do stuff that's going to get you in into trouble. And it tells women the, the same thing. So I, I think that is, that's, I think it's very good advice. It's very uh, wise to see how. Because, you know, look what it's costing people. It's, it's, people are going to jail. Men are going to jail now. And then they're, they've got videotape and audio tape of, of men, you know, Harvey Weinstein, you know, Dr. Uh, Bill Cosby, you know, all, all of these, you know, other people like that have served time in prison. Um, you know, CEOs have had to step down. People have had to make concessions, speeches. We men tend to be very weak of the flesh. You know, that, that's one of our, uh, our um, flaws. We gotta, we've got to be able to control it. And that doesn't, say, that doesn't mean that women <laughs> um, don't have some of this, the same temptations, if you will. But I, I think it's, it's, it's um, I don't think it's as intense for them. And I think also we still live in a society that, in my opinion, is, is quite misogynistic, that objectifies women. Um, and, and doesn't give them their minds and their spirit the the um, the sensitivity and the respect and authority that it deserves. So they're they're seen as objects. You know, don't, don't touch. <laughs> and I know you know you you also have to have the guts to call people out if you're a man. I had I've worked with doctors. Um, there was one doctor in particular who was known for giving this uh, secretary um, unsolicited back rubs and massages. And, and he would do it in front of everybody, like in the middle of, of the office space. And it was kind of cringy because you could see the woman kind of giggling, you know, that kind of nervous giggle, like, <laughs> ah, there you go, you know, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Now you can, you know, type on your computer a little bit better. And, and I... There was another older woman in the, in the room that would, um, I was just scowling at the doctor. And I said, does it bother you when he does it? He said, I don't like when he does that. And, you know, when the doctor left, I asked the young lady, I said, D do you mind when he does that? And she says, no, I, I really don't like that. Um, it makes me very uncomfortable. I said, well, do you want me to say something? She says, no, no, he's the doctor. Don't say anything. I don't want to, I don't want to cause any trouble. And that's, I've heard that a lot from women. I don't want to cause any trouble. Um, so I went and talked to the doctor, and this is where if you observe something like this, you and it's it's a superior, and it's on the workplace. You got to have a little bit of guts and and, and um, a little bit of bravery, and say, look, I, I went to the doctor. I said, look, you know, she really doesn't like when you do that. His response was, well, you know, uh, women shouldn't dress like that if they don't want us doing stuff, <laughs> if they don't want that kind of attention. And it, it's, it's um, pardon this expression, but I've, I've heard, um, oh, victim shaming, yeah. Uh, so I, I don't really remember what, this was years ago, so I don't remember exactly what happened with that situation. The woman did, she dressed in what I felt to be a kind of provocative manner, but as I've told other men, look, I don't care if that woman's buck naked, you don't have your right, the rights to, put your hands on her or say anything you want to to her. Uh, so you just got to check yourself 
men in particular I'm talking to, young men in particular, um, because your, your profession, bring honor to your profession. There's no more statute of limitations. You know, people can go back, you know, I'm 53 now. You know, somebody can go back 10, 15, 20, 30 years, you know, in the past and say, oh, Omar did this to me, he did that to me. You, you don't want that happening to you. Uh, so just just guard yourself, guard your modesty, um, and and uh, just try to be, you know, be professional. I, I guess that's that's uh, all I can say. Anyway, um, that's all for now. I'd like to know what your thoughts are. Be respectful to me and other people in the uh, comments section. Take care. Peace.